How much protein is in skeletal muscles? Structure and composition. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video we're going to be looking into skeletal muscles in detail. So who is this video for? It's for trainee fitness professionals and for those of you revising for your level 3 A&P exam. So if you've been working towards your level 3 anatomy and physiology and maybe even tearing your hair out at trying to understand all the different parts of the muscles, maybe you've been trying to understand all the different things of what you need to know for your exam, in which case this video is definitely for you. It will help you prepare for your exam and we're going to go through some really key concepts so that you're covering the main parts of what's covered in that exam and I've also got a mock question for you as well. So what we're going to cover today, we've got key muscle facts, the composition of skeletal muscles, the structure of a muscle and also a mock question at the very end. So let's look at those key muscle facts to start off with. First of all, skeletal muscle makes up 30 to 40% of the human body. So when you're thinking about how much muscle people have on their body, that will vary person to person, but on average, it's about 30 to 40%. And there's lots of different types of muscle fiber, of muscle fiber types that we have. You may have come across type one muscle fibers, type 2A, and type 2B. We're talking about all of these within what we're discussing today. So regardless of the muscle fibre type, all of these same characteristics still do apply. So we're going to now look at skeletal muscle and what it's made up of. So approximately 70 to 75 percent of the skeletal muscle is water. And you can equate this to with our physical body, the rest of our body, usually it's about 70% of our body is water. Same applies for a skeletal muscle. 18 to 23% is protein. And this is really key to think about because protein makes up the main sort of physical component of that, of that muscle and that skeletal muscle in particular. And when we're looking at the muscle structure, you'll notice that it's proteins, these really microscopic proteins that build up to allow us to have what we see as our full skeletal muscle. Then there's 1% is lipids, so that's fats. 1% is glycogen, which is stored carbohydrates, and the others are mineral salts, which are the really tiny um, salts and minerals within the muscle itself. So the main facts you'd need to know here is that water makes up between 70 and 75% of the skeletal muscle, and protein makes up somewhere between 18 and 23% of the muscle. Now, skeletal muscles vary massively, one muscle to the other. They vary in size, they vary in shape, and they also vary in arrangement of muscle fibres. So let's look at size to start off with. The, you can have everything from the tiniest little strands, which are within the inner ear, all the way up to the largest muscle fibres, which are in the quads themselves, so that you've got a massive variation in the actual muscle size from the very tiniest right to the largest. And that depends on what that job of that muscle is. If it's very small, um, small power required, then it's only going to be a small muscle. Whereas you compare it to the quads that need massive amount of power behind them, then that's going to need a larger muscle with much more muscle fiber density. Also, the shape varies. So you could have a broad shape like the latissimus dorsi, and you can actually see that on this image on screen, whereby it's all the way down the, uh, sort of the side of the body. The latissimus dorsi is a really broad, flat muscle. And you can compare this to one that's really narrow, like the tibialis anterior on the front of the shin, which is a very narrow shape. So they all come in different shapes and sizes. Now, alongside shape and size, you've also got arrangement of muscle fibres. And for your level three anatomy, you don't necessarily need to know the name of all these different types of muscle fibre arrangements, but it may help you with understanding how those muscle fibres work and how the muscle works to create joint action. There are lots of different arrangements of muscle fibres, but here are three that you can focus on just to give you some context to start off with. First of all is parallel arrangement, and this is whereby the muscle fibres are in line with the length, the, the long axis of the body. So when you're looking, say, for example, at the rectus abdominis, can you see that the fibres on it are vertical and they're in line with the long axis of the muscle? So that is classed as parallel. Then you've got convergent, which is where they go from like a fan shape and then converge down to a really narrow point. 
An example of this would be the pectoralis major, and you can actually see that on the image on screen. The chest muscle starts off very broad near the sternum and goes down to a small narrow point when it attaches to the humerus. And then you've got the oblique one, which is like the obliques in, on the side of our body, and you can see this on the image as well. And this is where it's diagonal to the midline of the body. So if it's diagonal to the midline of the body, it's classed as an oblique arrangement of muscle fibres. Now, like I say, you don't need to know each of these different types of arrangement of muscle fibres at level three, but you do need to be aware that they look different because of the arrangement is different. And this will allow you to see that there are different sizes, different shapes and different arrangements. So they're not all created equally. Now let's look at the structure of a skeletal muscle. So skeletal muscle is really highly organized. So the structure allows you to go from really small components all the way up to a massive large component. So when we look at the actual muscle on our body and we look at the, the like a, a, our bicep, for example, that's where we see the, the large part of the muscle, but actually it condenses down to the very, very small components. And that's what we're going to look at now. So when you have the largest part of the muscle, let's start off with the big part. And this is at the bottom of this list you can see here. Now, if you look at your bicep now or look at the image on screen, this is your muscle belly and this is covered in an epimysium. So epimysium is like a connective tissue that wraps around the entire muscle belly. So the muscle belly, imagine for a moment that you've got a chicken breast and you've wrapped it in cling film. That's what we're looking at now. The, the muscle belly is that chicken breast and the epimysium is the, is the cling film that's going around it. And that tails off to create the tendon on either side, which then attaches it to the bone. As we look a little bit deeper, the muscle belly is divided into fascicles and the fascicles are like you can see here, small chunks, which are bundles actually of muscle fibers, but the fascicle is also covered in a connective tissue, which is called perimysium. And then the fascicle is made up of lots of muscle fibers and a muscle fiber is surrounded by a connective tissue called an endomysium. And then a muscle fiber divides along on its length into sarcomeres, which are made up of actin and myosin. So in terms of the actual structure of a skeletal muscle, there are loads of components. And that's why when you've seen this sliding filament image, and you may have seen it before, like what you can see on screen at the moment, you can see there's like, it's almost like Russian dolls that they all stack in front, in, inside each other so that you end up with a small component contributing to one large component, all from being very highly organized. So let's work it back the other way. The smallest point, point is the myofilaments, and these are actin and myosin. They make up a sarcomere. A sarcomere is stacked end on end to create a muscle fiber. A muscle fiber is, connect, is covered in a connective tissue called an endomysium. A bundle of muscle fibers is then called a fascicle. And then a fascicle is wrapped in a perimysium, which is another connective tissue. And then bundles of fascicles are called the muscle belly. And then that muscle belly is wrapped in the epimysium. So you've got lots of different layers and you need to be aware of these ready for your level three anatomy and physiology exam. If you find it's very difficult to understand or to remember, then I definitely suggest you hang on to the end of this video where I've got an exclusive link for you for our revision mastery bootcamp, where we really do break down each of these points and give you some amazing different techniques to help you remember them. So there's lots of different ways that you can remember this order and what that actually means. And that's absolutely vital for your exam day. So let's now test your knowledge based on what we've learned here today. And this is a really good way to find out how much you do know right now. So what I'd like you to do is to, first of all, just read this question and write your answer in the comments box below. So how much protein is in a skeletal muscle? Is it A, 12%? Is it B, 57%? Is it C, 23%? Is it D, 75%? So jot your answer down in the comments box. And we've actually gone over this, this actual answer here in this same video. So whilst um, you're thinking about the answer, just to let you know that you can click the link that is with this video to download hundreds more mock questions, just like this one, and just as relevant for your exam, 
as this one is. And believe me, these types of questions are taken from previous live question, live papers, they're taken from previous mock papers, and we've re-sculpted them to really mimic what you will have in your exam, especially if you're with any of the leading awarding bodies like Active IQ, CYQ, FutureFit, um, VTCT, any of those awarding bodies for your level three anatomy and physiology, you will have very, very applicable mock questions. All you got to do is click the link. So let's have a look at the answer. The answer to this question is 23%. So the question is asking you how much protein is in skeletal muscles. And like we found out earlier in the video, 18 to 23% is for protein in the muscle, whereas 70 to 75% is water content. And then the other two answers in here, A and B, are a bit of a red herring. So they are there to sort of distract you away from the answers. But the answer is C, 23%. Very well done if you got that correct. If you have any questions on it, you can comment below as well. So now that you've gone through and tested your knowledge, have you noticed that there is gaps in your knowledge? So what I'd like to do is invite you to join thousands of learners that have passed with confidence using our Revision Mastery Bootcamp. And this is where you can drop overwhelm, build confidence and grow your a &P knowledge in under eight hours and you can see all of this on screen in terms of everything laid out for you of what you get and you get tons of information but the most important thing is you get it in a simplified format so it's not overwhelming and you get eight clear modules and these are video tutorials just like how I've presented this one to you today and what we do within those video modules is we make it really simple so that you can remember it easily and give you lots of memory hacks to help that stay inside your brain ready for exam day. You also have uh, cheat sheets that will allow you to be able to go through and test your knowledge throughout and also lots of mock questions that you can use to check that knowledge too. And then you've also got ability to download to mp3 and mp4 which means that you can basically learn wherever you are so anytime anywhere and the beauty of this is that you could download this uh, all of the tutorials and listen to it when you're walking the dog when you're in the gym when you're driving to work and this has a really really good effect at being able to help you with repetition as well you've also got some amazing bonuses in our revision mastery bootcamp offer at the moment and that includes our revision mastery schedule so in that schedule you can set out your weekly plan and allow others to help hold you accountable and you've got instant passing hacks as well which is going to teach you how to break down even the most complex of your exam questions so there is absolutely tons in our level three anatomy and physiology but most importantly our vision mastery bootcamp is going to break down all of the information you need and make it really simple for you to learn and remember ready for your exam day so what's the catch the, there is no catch <laughs> there is no catch it has everything in there that you require for your level three anatomy and physiology but there is some urgency needed in the fact that there is usually 299 pound however it's currently reduced down to 39.99 and i can honestly say i don't know how long we can keep it at that price for so what I would suggest is that you click through and then you can uh, immediately take advantage of the offer that we've got on at the moment. And I absolutely guarantee to you that you have everything in there that will help you pass your exam and really learn with confidence. So that is the Level 3 Anatomy and Physiology Revision Mastery Bootcamp. If you have any questions on it at all, you can obviously put that in the comments box as well. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video where we've looked at the structure and the composition of the muscle. We've also understood the key facts about skeletal muscle. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you on the next video.